So this is week nine in our 622, and we're going to the cloud. And I will say in looking at the syllabus and the invite list, anyone taking this class with Bonk the first semester has to suffer through my grading because I don't know what the heck I'm doing. And also has to suffer through the fact there's no rubric because I've not taught the course before. But, and, and, and have, they have no task examples to go by. So there are three apologies. However, however, there are two things that balance off again, three things. Number one, you have the guest speakers who are the best I can possibly bring in coming in every week. And next time I teach the course, these people will not be coming back. So we, uh, I think that more than offsets against not having a rubric for the assessments, okay? The second thing you have is spontaneity because the syllabus is constantly changing and there's new things that I'm finding, right? And the third thing that you have that no one else probably will ever have in R622 whenever I teach it again, you have the best TA that there could possibly be in SUNY. So three good things. I think they totally outweigh the things that challenges and other issues that we might face. And no one complained that I didn't have a rubric other than myself, to myself. So I, 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 I submitted the complaint to Professor Bonk and um, he says he'll rectify it next time. And he thought about a rubric when he got halfway through the grading he said, well, this would make a nice rubric, but then you have to go back and grade the other half again. And I said, I don't feel like doing that. So, okay, so next time. Um, before I get started, I wanna make sure um, if Bo or Ga have any questions about the course or the grades or anything else in life before I get started here. I have lots of life questions, but none that need to be answered this evening. Thank you. <laughs> well, I have just the thing for you. My new calendar came out and it is thoughts on pondering on leadership, learning and life. So there's all sorts of life solutions as we flip through. Isn't is it that on nice? Amazon? If, if, and now that's the other thing I have to do this week before I go to ACT is figure out how to get it on Amazon. So Ga, we have, who do we have with you here? At, do we have a turkey vulture hanging on to you or what is it? <laughs> this is my daughter, Tanya. Oh, okay. You're, I just saw the top of the head and I thought yeah. maybe you were holding a, 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 a turkey, you know, getting ready to know. Hi, what's her name? Hi. Hi. What's your name? Tanya. 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 Yeah. T-A-N-Y-A. Tia and Tanya. Okay, yeah. Tanya. Because okay. I, I have just spoken to my friend Tarja in Finland. That's a Finnish oh. name. Tanya, I don't know where that's from originally. Probably Italy or someplace. I don't know. Maybe Spain. Um, lovely name. And um, so I think I'll get started here because we do have a guest coming in at eight o'clock. I want to give us a little break before the guest arrives in here. And as I designed the syllabus, I said to myself, you can offer your Tech Variety model, the R2D2 model, and the Education 2020 model in R622 for people to reflect on and think about the design of their learning environments. The Tech Variety from a motivational standpoint and the R2D2 model from a standpoint of addressing diverse learners. And the Education 2020 model has no particular type of learner in mind or aspect of psychology. It's a really a complete model, re, re, really rethinking what the instructor does, if nothing else. It's more focused on the instructor, whereas R2D2 and Tech Variety are more focused on the learners. And um, uh, but, but they all have aspects of teaching and learning within. So then I said, you know, I'm not doing R546 this semester, or this year, but in effect, the entire R546 course is a framework. That course has been designed over 30 years and I've taught it and has a new book of stories that came out from prior students who took that course. And if these prior students are implementing the ideas from R546 in 22 different countries around the world, just in that book alone, more many more countries than that, but just in that book, then maybe there's something to that course that is a, about learning environments design that I can share with 622 people and have them make sense of it. 
And while I was designing the syllabus, people who God knows, friends at Beijing Normal University, you might have been there. God, have you ever been to Beijing? Yeah, my parents are still in there. Okay, you know where Beijing Normal University is? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I've been there a couple of times, and they had me speak on different things over the past couple of years, many talks. But the last one I gave, I said, you know, I could take that R546 course and divide it up into four components and talk to them about active teaching and learning strategies. And so I said, you know, that would maybe make some sense for 622 people as well. So that's what I'm going to present for you. I, I've updated, modified, and changed it around last night. I was up to about, I was up to about 2:30 or so. Um, I sent you the PDF of the slides, the original slides of talk, as well as He Jung and her guest. They're in Dropbox. Okay. I might not get all the way through it. I might skim some things as we go along in here. And I might mess up from time to time. I'm not sure. Um, but I'm going to hit share right now. And I'll see if I can and talk to Soon May for a second. Can you see that, Soon May? Okay. So I presented a few weeks ago on my Tech Variety Model, which is a free book um, that you can download since 2014. My colleague, Elaine Ko from New Zealand, she's actually switched jobs. She used to be at the University of Waikato in Hamilton, New Zealand. Now she's at Massey University working in Auckland, which is commutable back and forth. Um, and she and I updated the Tech Variety book, adding Tech Variety to this new book that came out um, called Motivating and Supporting Online Learners. And it was published by the Commonwealth of Learning the Commonwealth of Learning is in Vancouver, um, British Columbia, and they help the former British colonies out, in particular teacher training in Jamaica, in Botswana, in the Bahamas, in India, in Pakistan, and other parts of the world, Ma Malaysia, Singapore, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and so forth. So my tech variety, oh, I'm sorry, my, um, my course, um, R546 on instructional strategies is about critical thinking, creative thinking, cooperative learning, and motivation for components, as well as technology integration. My first question for you tonight, before we get started, a warm-up question, A, type in A, I feel so great, you could be Superman or, or Superwoman. B, I feel really good, thank you. C, I'm a little tired, but still fine. D, not sure yet, but glad to be here. E, not fully here nor there since I have some personal issues to be sorted out. F, overwhelmed and feeling lost. And G is other. So type uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, or G in the chat. And we have lots of Cs, lots of Bs. Okay. All right. That's, that's a good way to start tonight. Okay. All right. Next question. There are, um, in terms of teaching philosophy, have you reflected on the teaching philosophy? Answer A, many times during the pandemic, you reflected on teaching philosophy. B, many times you're taking action. So A is many times that I'm dramatically changing my philosophy. B is many times I'm taking action, meeting people. C, you thought about it. D, I'm not sure your brain is dead. Or E, my teaching philosophy is basically the same as pre-pandemic, okay? So have you changed your teaching philosophy? during the pandemic, and we've got some A's and C's again in, in E and E. Oh, so you're basically the same. That's, 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 that's a genuine answer. We call that a genuine answer. We got a B from Sume, okay. Maybe I shouldn't read your names. So let's go on. In the chat window, how, how can you motivate people online? Now, this is a question I asked three or four weeks ago. What's a strategy you can use to motivate people for online environments? And I've got about five minutes for each of the next four sections. So I need people putting something in here. Ask questions like I just did. Humor, which I try to do. <laughs> Bo is suggesting that I haven't been humorous yet. <laughs> Thank you, Bo. <laughs> spontaneity, group activities, ignoring Dr. Bunk where possible. Okay. <laughs> just keeping you, okay, just 
Spontaneity, that's definitely a good one. All right, next item, back to motivation. We see motivation occurring all around us, but can we manufacture motivation? Is it just like going through an assembly in an automobile factory or in a phar pharma pharmacology company, manufacturing new drugs, new treatments, new televisions or automobiles? Can we do such things? Um, I'm just flipping through some slides. Can we manufacture motivation? That's my question in the chat window. What do you think? Yes, no, maybe, or definitely not. Whatever you want to answer, that's okay. <laughs> Can we manufacture motivation? I'm curious what people said. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard. Yes and no, but it's hard. It's hard to motivate. Hard to know what motivation is these days. Might have it one minute, it might be gone the next. In my new calendar, I talk a lot about motivation and how fleeting it sometimes is, you know. Okay, let's keep moving on. Motivation. This guy was motivated when his wife passed away a year and a half ago, or almost two years ago. He's a rock singer in Philadelphia, and he decided to run every day. He decided to just jog every day. Now, stupid people like me decide to jog every day. I've, I've done it too. Um, my motivation was I know I'd get a new pair of shoes every two months or every month. I had 16 pairs of shoes from jogging every day. Another part of the motivation is I had a goal. I had a goal set up for me. Every 50 days, I would get a new T-shirt from one of my former students <laughs> or a hat. So I got lots of shoes, lots of hats, very extrinsic goals. I'm, I'm very behavioral, behaviorally oriented. It's not nothing intrinsic motivation about it. I wanted the hat. I wanted the shirt. I wanted the mug. I don't know. I didn't bring it up, but I got different mug, different mugs from different people. Uh, some with my picture on it and so forth. So motivation. How do we motivate people? People like me, it's, intrin it's extrinsic and intrinsic. I need a little bit of both. I'm sure all of you are this. Most of you are the same. Those are all the shoes that I bought. Well, I got a couple of new ones since that picture was taken about uh, 300 days ago. Let's see, I probably have three new pairs of shoes I could add to that. That was taken on day 600. I'm now at day 941. Uh, so I had 16 or so pairs. So I want you to type in the next poll. Which topic is the most important or interesting to you? Creativity and creative thinking online? Critical thinking or creative thinking, critical thinking online? Collaborative learning and teamwork, cooperative learning, or online motivation? If you had to pick one, what would it be as most important to you? Because I'm going to cover all four, and I want to know what you want me to emphasize. So let me take a look at what you said here. So far, creative thinking. Okay. All right. I got to get sandals, Bo says. Well, there, see, these... These are all Asex, and Asex was supposed to send me some clothes <laughs> and take my picture, but they haven't. They, they contacted me. So we got one vote for creative thinking, one vote for motivation, and one vote for everything so far. I'm not sure did Gov respond yet. Oh, he said all. Okay, all right. So we do have all the votes in. Okay, great. So motivation. The tech variety model is all about motivation, whether it's feedback or authentic learning or challenges or goals or comfort, psychological safety or interactivity. All these things, all these aspects of motivation are covered in the tech variety book. And that's why it's perhaps my most popular book, maybe, because it has a framework that makes sense to people in some ways. They've all seen curiosity and variety and they've seen tension and interactivity. But that book is 2014, that's eight years ago. So that book needed a little up upgrade or update in effect to it, but that's the tech variety. So this new book just came out a week and a half or two weeks back, and it has not just a free book, digital book has a course, a free class you can sign up for and take. It's meant to help teachers in the global south or the developing world, but anyone can take this book. So it's my second book to help in the online 
um, learning environments. And it'll be connected to my IR546 course as well as this class and maybe some others. Um, so Elaine took the lead on this one. She, she's listed first. She was temporarily unemployed. And I said, why don't you go ahead and take the lead on it? Because I'm definitely not temporarily unemployed. I was working a lot of hours. And now I've just spilled this lovely kombucha on all my clothes here because it fizzed out all over, all over me. But I'm still going to open up and drink out of it since I'm halfway open. What's a good kombucha? Well, if it stained, it didn't stain my pants. Then my tie got all kombucha all over it. Okay, so if you do take a look at the class, this is the first screen you will see on the on the on the course that goes with the book. So we have a parallel book and class, and they're both free. And they have modules on all ten of the Tech Variety book, so you can find out more about creating relevance or creating engagement or creating tension. It's it's all laid out in there in a step by step kind of fashion. Um, and we had the support of the Commonwealth of Learning, which has a whole design team. And my friend Sanjaya Mishra, who will be our guest in week 13, he was the education lead on this, the director who designed this course. So we will bring him in to talk about smart technologies in week 13. He has two new books on smart technologies. He's one of my good friends for a long time. This is another screen from the free class on how to promote interactivity. So I just thought I'd show you a couple of things. This is a list of some of the activities in the book as well as in the class, flipping the classroom, creating word cloud interactions, role play of scientists, um, interactive online questioning and discussion, jigsaw. You might have heard of the jigsaw method and so forth and so on. So all these are techniques that are discussed in the book that you can utilize in your classes. So motivation is the first part of the four we'll cover tonight. One way that I, I've been motivating people is by, in my face-to-face -face class, playing music before class starts, just to bring people into the class or during break time, I play music. Now, some of the songs and rock groups that I play, some of the students don't recognize. So I have to update my musical selections to be in tune with, in tune, that's a, no pun intended, with the tastes of the current students. You can also do these virtual choirs. So there's an Indiana virtual choir that sings Hail to Old IU. Or if you're teaching history or European history, you might bring in violinists playing in the subways of Ukraine during the bombings that are happening every day from Russia to Ukraine, from Russia with love, I guess they would say that, um, or without love. Um, so violinists playing across the world, uh, playing for Ukraine. It's a way to kind of intrigue people when you might teach a unit on European history or on Ukrainian history that um, might in entice them in a little bit. Last, oh, two weeks ago, my friend Joshua Kim wrote an article for Inside Higher Ed, and he had 52 team meeting icebreakers. And I thought we'd try a couple of them out in here. So, um, the first one, what is your favorite game? Put in the chat window, what's your favorite game? Whatever it is. And maybe I should put my favorite game in too. Um, but I have many games that I like, but I will just say, ooh, that's a tough choice. I will say, Sudoku, okay, Clash and Clan, <laughs> and Sunmei, what'd you say? I don't see your choice in here, Sunmei. I put Australian rules rugby, something like that. Um, I'm not a cricket fan at all. <laughs> Korean card games, so, so I have to teach you card games, and Sunmei, I know some American card games I could teach you, because I grew up in Milwaukee where people play sheep's head and pinochle and all sorts of fun games. Okay, second question in the chat window. What's one thing you're grateful for this week? What's one thing you're grateful for this week? Okay, well, let's, let me put something, what am I grateful for this week? Ah.
Well, we'll bring you over to finish my landscaping too. Okay, soon, man. I can see that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the weather, okay. Coffee. <laughs> I had, so, Bo, I gave up coffee in July 25th, 1995, probably before you were born or around when you were born. Um, <laughs> I was drinking too much of it. <laughs> just say. I, I'm 40. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look younger than that. We won't tell anybody. Uh, <laughs> and Sunmei looks younger than that, too. And so does God. So, you know, you all, you all look young. Here tonight. So, so it's 42 icebreakers. So here's something you can use right away in your classes. I think this is a fascinating article, you know, uh, a way to get people some shared knowledge, mutual knowledge, some inner subjectivity with each other. I can start talking about Korean card games in my next lecture or talk about landscaping and so forth. And, you know, we can, we can have some common knowledge with one another. Now we did that in Padlet. Soon they set up a Padlet, I think, for us the first week. You could also use Flipgrid to discuss your interests, your um, your hobbies, uh, where you were born and so forth. And we did that in my class a couple of years ago when the pandemic hit, we used Flipgrid. It's now just called Flip. And it was built by a friend of mine at the University of Minnesota, who now, as I said last week, he left Minnesota to work at Microsoft as a vice president and doesn't have to really worry about working anymore the rest of his life. <laughs> But we might use Padlet as we did last year, as we did um, this fall. You know, you find out a little bit about your students and their hobbies and their current occupation and, you know, their family life and the challenges that they face and so forth. You might use warm up exercises in Jamboard to have students discuss their, um, you know, the situation they're in, the challenges that they face, the the successes that they've had, um, the failures that they might have had, just a little jam board activity uh, to free people up. If you're doing a mobile learning uh, lesson plan, have a little jam board. What are the educational uses of mobile learning before you discuss them? And you find out what your students know already, what they don't know, what they want to know. Uh, just a little, you know, what do you still want to know about this topic? What would you like to learn about? Uh, you know, what, what gaps exist in your knowledge? Just a little jam board like that. So, you know, what's a recent peak experience that you've had? What, you know, what do you feel grateful for? All these things are things I cover in the, so next fall in R546, if anyone wants to take R546, this is to entice you in, we'll be covering some of these things in there about how to foster creativity, how to foster motivation. What, what epitomizes your motto in life? You know, just getting that up. And then we have Ask Me Anything sessions. In my, my Tuesday night class, I bring in researchers and we can ask them about research. About So it's my dissertation prep class. We just, you know, my students are asking them questions about their dissertations. Ask me anything. Or about their dogs or about their cats or about where they grew up. So this Jamboard was Ask Me Anything. <laughs> um, and so they, and maybe we'll do that in here. You know, uh, my students last year got to ask me anything they wanted to ask. Um, yeah, this is another group. This is the questions, the other group. Um, who is falling behind? Who's failing this class? They wanted me to, <laughs> you know, I said, well, I, you know, no, I don't know. So yeah, so that was an ask me anything that we had. Um, this was the question. So we also can do questions for guests. So we'll have Sanjaya Mishra. I had him in as a guest last spring. We'll have him in here in a few weeks uh, down the road. We can ask. Also having students lay out what their expectations of the course is, what their goals of the course is, what would they like to accomplish, and then you can tell them when you're going to get there. The list of goals and expectations are a way to motivate because instead of students waiting and waiting and waiting for the goals to be met, they know when the instructor is going to get to them. Or having students bring in articles from the class or figures and graphs and tables, have them bring in the top visual of all the articles they read, uh, have them bring in a quote or a set of quotes of the best articles they've read, and have them present on those quotes are ways to engage and motivate students into that class or into that unit or into those articles that you assigned. This is one of the top 
top 10 activities, I think, of all time is giving students 99 seconds to make a statement about something they read, a quote that they read, or a figure or a table, or just incorporating the news into your class. You know, the, the Webb Space Telescope is offering all sorts of unique views on, uh, on this, this galaxy and well beyond. And so incorporating such technology, such pictures and images and scientific findings and scientists' explanations and scientists' interviews into your class. It might be part of a NASA science lesson that's all free. You might be able to utilize these at nasa.gov slash STEM science lessons to entice your students and engage your students into, into STEM. And our guest tonight is an expert at STEM and STEAM, STEAM standing for art in addition to um, science, engineering, and math, and so forth, and technology. Um, you might also entice your students through podcast shows, whether it might be NSF, uh, NPR podcast show, or my friend here, Michael Horn, who was my guest in Silver Lining for Learning a few weeks ago. Um, he had a podcast two weeks ago I listened to called Boundless Life, where people are deciding to give up their current lives and become digital nomads. Um, they've gotten funding in this Boundless Life project to let families kind of relocate to wherever they want to live in the world and transition to a digital lifestyle. And that's what Bo wants to do next in his lifestyle. Bo, go ahead. Was that Michael Horn from the Blended book? It is Michael Horn from the Blended book. You know the guy. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, I've got, I've got both of those. That's like kind of our, our Bible for one of the, the courses that I created. So that's pretty cool. Which course? Uh, I, we just did, we created a, a blended learning course um, in, uh, for my, my job uh, within the Brightspace LMS. Okay, so and Michael's I, well known. He's a business guy. He's got his master's, his MBA. He's not an educator originally. He's really had to do his homework. He worked for Clayton Christensen at Harvard. And they wrote a book called Disrupting Class right around 2006 or seven or eight, somewhere or nine, somewhere around there. When my World is Open book came out, it was maybe a year or two before that. And Clayton Christensen has passed away a couple of years back. And so he's doing most of this work on his own. He's really expanding. Quite an interesting guy. Um, so you can listen to the podcast show that we did with him maybe a month ago, if you want. Um, Maybe soon they could find the link to so I mean, Silver Lining for Learning and Michael Horn, soon may, and see if you can find the episode that appears with him. Um, so yeah, he, he's a really smart guy. He has a newsletter that comes out. I just got one that comes out a couple times a week and many books, not just blended. He's got, he's got a new book about really transforming education in general. And I'm going to have a podcast. Uh, I'm going to have a webinar on how to use podcasts, um, show how to use podcasts in your own teaching and learning. So Contact North in Ontario has had me do several presentations. They're one hour long. You can attend them for free. They have many, in fact, our guest in two weeks, our first guest in two weeks is a very famous guy, Tony Bates. He does many webinars for Contact North that are all free. He has a free book on the digital learner as well. Um, he's 80 years old and he wants to retire, but people will not let him. Uh, so Contact North is teach uh, teachonline.ca slash webinars. I'm going to do one on how, to, on how to use YouTube videos and podcasts in your instruction on November 23rd. Uh, the day before Thanksgiving, and everyone's allowed to be free. My friend Kyungmi um, Lee, my, one of my mentees, is doing one on December 8th. And um, should online education be cheaper? And so, so, yeah, anyhow, creative thinking. So I've covered a little bit about uh, motivation. Now, creative thinking about generating ideas and getting ideas on the Jamboard or on a Miro site or on a, you know, a word cloud or some other place to have students just generate ideas, divergent thinking instead of convergent thinking. You know, put a Padlet up there and reflect on different tools for technology integration, reflect on, you know, different ideas about the next generation of teaching and learning. What would education 3.0 or 4.0 look like? 
Just reflect without evaluation. What are the principles of education 3.0? You know, brainstorm in, the, in a jam board. What did you learn about R2D2 model two weeks ago in here? What, what is the R2D2 model? How can you use the R2D2 model? You know, what are your perceptions of learning analytics? What are your perceptions of big data? What are your perceptions of micro credentials? What are your perceptions of massive open online courses? Just brainstorming and don't, don't evaluate. Don't put the idea squelching hat on. Uh, just let people um, popcorn one idea off of another. And um, don't evaluate to the second phase or second round. And these are some of the idea squelching statements that you'll face in society. You know, constantly you'll face idea squelchers, the no people out there. Uh, at Wisconsin, when I was in grad school, we had a department chair, they called him Dr. No. <laughs> he would say no to everything, you know, Dr. No. There's too many Dr. No's and not enough Dr. Yeses out there, right? Instead of asking, how can we increase creativity in school? Ask, how can we de decrease it? Ask reverse brainstorming questions. Instead of how can we increase how can, instead of how can we decrease costs in a, health, in a hospital, how can we increase costs? You know, ask the opposite question to get people's minds freed up. And this is the, the Miro tool that you might have seen in late night TV commercials with a monster eating, I don't know what he's eating. It's a really cool commercial, whatever it is. But Miro has all of a sudden created a whole bunch of marketing ads because apparently it's become real popular. To, to create visualizations at work. And so my, uh, my former TA, Merve Bazigan, has done presentations for my class on how to use Miro to visualize things. You can also use MindMeister, Gliffy, MindDomo to do concept mapping for free or word clouds like Worded Out or WordSift and so forth. These are all ways to visualize knowledge. Um, that, that's the end of the creativity part. I've got 15 minutes left. Um, type in A if you got some ideas. B if you got several ideas. C if you got uh, maybe you got some ideas. D no, you didn't get anything. E your brain is dead today. F there's no hope for, for you <laughs> because I'm an idiot. Um, <laughs> your instructor's an idiot. Um, so I'm curious. We well, got some ideas. Thank you. Uh, Okay, thank you, Bo. Okay, I'll head on to the next part, critical thinking. Well, I'll pause for a second. Any comments so far or questions? Any comments or questions? Maybe I should pop back out to the big picture. <laughs> Mika, I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> Hi, I just got in from work and I'm, I'm putting together dinner and everything. I thought you were going to say, I just got off the plane. I'm in the airport concourse in Indianapolis. <laughs> that would be good. But I, I put that, I got some ideas from that um, creative, the 12 types of creative learning slide. Yeah. Um, oh, Mira. okay. So I'll I go need... through the presentation after. Okay. I'm halfway through here, more than halfway. But have, so um, thank you for being with us. Bo, uh, any comment? Okay. Uh, Sunmay, any comment? Please say something, Sune, please. <laughs> Everything is okay. Yeah. <laughs> What's good. one thing that, that I mentioned that you hadn't heard before? Because you've heard me too many times. What's one thing new? Actually, I heard everything, I think. <laughs> That's because I took multiple classes. Okay. You know? Yeah, from so you. Yeah. My challenge is to have something new. Okay. <laughs> and we're still recording this. Okay, let me go back to where we were. Okay, can I ask a question? Sure. Okay, so I I uh, I discovered Miro uh, in the spring of this year, and one of the ways that I've utilized it is through like collaborative in person presentations. Um, what have you found to be challenging when introducing a new technology tool to learners? Uh, because the first time I used it. Um, I was a little bit nervous because sometimes the the teachers that I work with, you know, they're not um, always going to be super um, excited about new technologies. And so one of the things that I, I used um, the night before my first time using it, I was um, watching Stranger Things 
and there was a dance scene at the end of season two on the, the last episode where the middle schoolers go to a dance and um, the, the boy asks the girl to dance and she says, I don't know how. And he says, I don't either. Let's figure it out together. And so I, I brought that sequence in. I introduced the entire, uh, the entire session of Miro with that. Now, it was really fun, but I was just interested in hearing you know, what, what yeah. examples you've used uh, for things like that. Yeah, so I used Miro a year, a little over a year ago, and we were doing a the plan for um, the School of Ed, the future of the School of Ed. And I had to, I was just playing around, and I had to have my assistant show us. But when when I did a teacher training um, for five years in Southern Indiana and Central Indiana for rural teachers called the Ticket Project, when we were training them. We had we did a couple of things. We had a backup plan if something didn't work. We had a second technology if the first technology didn't work. We knew we had something in our back pockets, maybe even a third thing. So we didn't just rely on one thing, especially if it's kind of cutting edge, like a you know VR or AR tool. I would not rely on that at all. I'd have a backup. I also start with something easy to use that pretty much is only password and a couple of points and click, and people can get in, like um, Tube Chop, where you can chop up videos into short sequences, something that simple. So that, that's the second thing that I would do. Um, I would start with without telling the theory behind it. Number three, don't tell them theory until later. To have them do something that works first, and then you tell them the theory behind it. Okay. Gotcha. Um, the fourth thing I would maybe have them do is if you give them, if you have three choices, I, I would maybe demo them, but let them choose which one they want. And then the people who all chose the same, have them get in a group and discuss how they would use that tool and then rotate them into mixed groups. So if you have three tools, you let them all pick one, whatever one they want. And you might have a Miro team and a Padlet team and a Jamboard team. And then you have all the Padlet people meet. And then you, then you move them into a group where they have one person from each type and have them discuss how they use their respective tool, almost like a jigsaw, and then go back to their main group and have them share with what they've heard from the other team to convince each other to use. If they're a Padlet team, have them convinced to use Jamboard, have them convinced to use Miro, have them convinced to use you know, Hypothesis or um, Trello or whatever these other tools are. So there's more that you can do naturally. Important thing is to have them reflect, and it could just be a note card reflection that they turn in one minute or 30 seconds, or have them commit to something. Have them write down what they're going to commit to do and have them leave that on their table at the end as they leave, and then you can read them and respond to them. So you don't want to just demo. You want to have some commitment to doing, right? And they might not get that commitment until they hear other people and what the hell they're going to use it. You're also going to have prior students come back to give testimonials or just keep, collect them in written format. So my calendar project, which just came out, the, the second page of the calendar has testimonials from other people. OK, so that's critical. And, and, and to convince others, you need to have same age peers. And often if an instructor is like 20 years older than the students, that's going to they're just going to look the other way. And if you bring back prior students who are also undergraduate pre-service teacher majors, 18, 19, 22 year olds, they're more, they're more capable of convincing than having the, the uh, uh, more experienced professor. <laughs> I won't say old. <laughs> Good question. Let me go back to the slides here. Um, did that help? Yeah. Yes. So there is a paper with our ticket project that lays out the factors that led to success in the ticket program, a couple of them. And if you remind me, I could share them with you. If you're interested in the model, we create a model behind this teacher institute for curriculum knowledge about the integration of technology that worked in Indiana for five years. So the third part here is critical thinking, you know, decision making, analogical reasoning, evaluation is the key thing. So doing comparison and contrast, doing a Venn diagram. And if you think about tonight, you can think about on the, uh, the pink here uh, circle would be creative thinking and the green would be critical thinking and the, per and the blue would be cooperative learning and wrapped all the way around that would be motivation and wrapped around that would be tech integration. That could be the model for tonight is three overlapping circles, a Venn diagram, if you will, with an outer circle related to motivation. You know, that's the model. I don't have it published or anything, 
but that's what it would be if I did publish. So there's a company called Lucid, and they have a division called Lucid for Education, which offers free uh, visualization tools for Venn diagrams, for comparison and contrast, for flow charting. Um, many, many, some, some cost you money and some are free. And so, so I, I just point out that tool. You might go to Lucid for, for education. Um, you might do pros and cons. What are the pros and cons of a jigsaw? What are the pros and cons of a think pair share? What are the pros and cons of reciprocal teaching where students become the teacher? That's getting critical thinking because students have to reflect on it. They have to think about when you're doing comparison and contrast, they have to think about what's missing, you know, what elements are go in the Venn diagram, what get excluded from the Venn diagram. So, you know, doing a, a pro and con of problem-based learning. Well, pro, so answering your question, I didn't answer your question. What's problematic is time. The technology might not work. Accessibility, familiarity, number of steps involved to use the technology. You don't want to have things being many steps. It might be complicated. So there's all sorts of barriers to integrating technology, just the language used, right? So in terms of critical thinking, simple things you can do are Venn diagrams, are comparison and contrast, are value lines. Where do your value fall on a, on a scale of one to a hundred in terms of the use of creative thinking in your classroom? You know, to what degree can you utilize it or not? Or in terms of Venn diagrams, you know, how are critical and creative thinking alike? What makes them similar? What overlaps among, when you have students doing critical thinking, how is it similar to creative thinking? You know, um, what did you know about this topic? What did you want to know? Still, what did you learn? A KWL. KWHL, how will we learn it? So just compartmentalizing knowledge into these pros and cons or PMIs, plus minus and interesting kinds of things are ways to foster critical thinking. Also having students do book reviews and um, publishing them potentially on Amazon or reflecting, reflecting, reflecting on big questions, on important issues, on challenges, big question reflections, KWLs. What do we know? What do we want to know? What did we learn? These are all good for critical thinking. I'm using Jamboard, I'm using Padlet, I might be using Miro. These are simple tools that you can utilize with these teachers. Write a summary of what we've learned, a nutshell or an abstract of the article. When we write a short 100 word summary and share it with another group, share your summary back and forth. The fourth one is collaboration, getting teams to do reflection in a Jamboard, having teams go to the breakout rooms and discuss, having teams do a summary of an article and share their summary of the key points of the issues, of the, the questions that they have. Team number one, this is theirs. Team number two, team number three, and we all post up in the Jamboard. Having a, having a team collaborate to annotate articles, to edit documents, to revise an, a document using perusal or using video ant or some other tool to enable a group or Google Documents is the natural one. Everyone uses Google Docs to do something like that. So you can have them go to a breakout room in Zoom and discuss an issue or share their expectations or um, share their introductions and then introduce each other to the class. You can use Trello for teamwork and monitor the progress of a team as they, as they as they move along in different phases of a project and post their work and the links to the work. You can use tools like Nuclino for online discussion forums instead of Canvas, which is inferior. I hate Canvas. It's okay, discussion in Canvas, but Nuclino is open to the world. You don't need a password. You don't need to get in and take an IU class to use, utilize it, okay? So we've done debates using this tool or other tools and so forth in team format. We've had structured controversy where one team takes a pro side, one team takes a con side, and we debate with one another. Um, and we've also had students doing animations or creating songs or doing podcast shows or documentaries as a class project or as a team project. So finally, you integrate the four elements together, creative thinking, critical thinking, motivation, and collaboration. These elements, and I see my friend Cheryl Narahara, 
Uh, my friend Cheryl Narhara Hathaway is joining us, who's an alum of the IST program. So Cheryl, thank you for joining us in here. I'm just wrapping up before we go to the guest for tonight. So I, I was saying that, you know, uh, we can do all these fancy things with different technology tools that foster critical thinking, creative thinking, collaborative learning, you know, jam boards or padlets and all these kinds of things out there, you know, to get students to interact with one another. I'm just skipping, I'm going backwards here in time. So Cheryl can catch up with us. I've done Venn diagrams, I've done pros and cons and all, you know, critical thinking, creative thinking, word sift, you know, Miro, all these tools are out there to help foster creative thinking, critical thinking, and so now I'm gonna jump ahead to where we were, back to where we were, there we were. So now we have to think about integrating all these things together. And, and no activity is exclusively creative thinking, no activity is exclusively critical thinking or motivation. They, they include some components of all three. So when our guest tonight talks about having your students posting their work in a Padlet, this is one of her slides, I stole it from her. When she comes in tonight, you know, her the, the ideas sound like very much critical thinking and it's many hands-on kinds of things and team collaboration, but there's motivation, there's creativity, there's all these things in students um, doing robotics or testing drones or uh, whatever activity of the maker lab space and so forth that she shows us. Even my silver lining for learning show every week we are, we are we're on the show, but there's ways you can utilize the shows to foster creative thinking or critical reflection or teamwork and so forth. Think about how to reuse these existing videos to have students maybe create their own podcast show to maybe having their students do their own documentaries having students interview some of the people that we've brought in for their own show and so forth. I bring in different guests into my classes, as you know, each week. And some of these guests extend us beyond what their article contains and takes us to their new thinking, their next article that they're, they're working on or something that they haven't published, but are hope to in the future. And they extend the thinking beyond the art, the assignments in the dang syllabus <laughs> to real life, the real ups and downs of being a researcher, the rejections that we get, as Cheryl knows, and the acceptance like we got one today. My team did um, got an acceptance in one minute and got a rejection an hour earlier and got an, a third article sort of accepted with mild revisions, we think. And then when you interview enough people, you can create a playlist of them and do all sorts of things with those guests that you brought in. Now, Cheryl was a guest last semester in my R511 class, and her husband was too, because her husband was is, is a, a game developer and was involved in World of Warcraft and all sorts of things like that. Um, so you can have these playlists of different guests, including myself. So I mentioned the tech variety model and the free book that now exists, extending the Tech Variety book. One of my students last year created a vi video series explaining each component of the Tech Variety uh, model, variety, autonomy, relevance, interactivity. It's now a playlist explaining my book. She spent, I think like 150 hours on her final assignment in my class, <laughs> like weeks of her time. <laughs> She's kind of crazy, um, but but did some great, really great work, these explanatory videos explaining the Tech Variety model. One of my students last night sent me a mobile app that she developed to teach Chinese. She's She was my master's student is trying to get into the PhD program uh, at IU. Her name's Belle Lee. And on her own, she developed a mobile app to teach Chinese language. I thought that's pretty cool. I don't think Sun may have seen that one. Um, so when you're done teaching a lesson, you might have some kind of ways to recap, to rethink, to summarize, to um, process the knowledge in a different way. And so you might do a one, three, two, one recap. You might do a, you know, what were three good things? What were three bad things? What are three questions you have from today? You know, um, I talked about motivation. 
I'm still going to talk about motivation next time and the time after and the time after. It's critical to have motivated students. So last question, how many ideas did you get from this talk? Zero if you're lucky. Just one, two, three, four, five. Go ahead. I won't even check the chat. Oh, maybe I will. So, um, <laughs> so no one got any. Okay. All right. All right. A uh, hundred from Bo, four from Jen. That's a 25 to one ratio. So <laughs> process, process. So three words from tonight's session in the jet in the chat. Three words from the session. I'm overwhelmed. I need break. Time to go. I hate bonk. Whatever it is you want to put in the chat for three words. And remember, I cannot do this alone. Try some of these things out um, and so forth in your own classes. There's the new free book on the right. It's just a digital book from the Commonwealth of Learning. There's the old free book on the left. Uh, they both take you to the same place, the tech variety model. So that's a summary of the fourth framework. So the fourth frame, so I, for R2D2, Tech Variety, Education 2020. The fourth framework has no name. <laughs> it's just, maybe we call it, you've been bonked. You know, that's, uh, you know. The, 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 so it's creative thinking, critical thinking, collaboration, motivation wraps around it, and technology integration around that. It's all five, the big bonk theory, you know? <laughs> the big bomb theory. So Cheryl's going to, you know, maybe reca recap for us. Cheryl, I want your thoughts. What do you think? Another free book. That's awesome. I can give this out to my students. This is fantastic. And a free class. Sweet. And a free class. Yeah. The Commonwealth of Learning made it a free class. It's a shorter that book. It's fantastic. It's no print. It's all digital. Open education resources. It's it's really wonderful. You could take that anywhere with you. you. It could be a college course, graduate course, high school course. Now, I have a question for you before we stop the recording. You're in California, yet you've got snow. Be you're in Southern California. Is that snow behind you? And so, yeah, I got photobombed. Somebody, <laughs> somebody sent me uh, their background, and I said, okay, I'm going to put it up. So... Oh, you I did? miss oh. the snow. I miss the snow, but I'm in California. Yes, I'm in. I'm in California. So <laughs> we don't have this kind of snow. My friend is in this kind of snow. Soon in California. Soon may Soon may created the for Paul Kim. She created the the oh. Smile Project. Do you know Smile? Oh, wow, Smile. the Smile Project was awesome. Very Thank interesting, you. engaging work. Thank you. <laughs> that is fabulous. Yeah, she's also working for an ed tech company in um, in Berkeley that's oh. uh, creating some math. Uh, Toto Math, is that right? Yeah, right. Toto Math, yeah, math games. So it's kind of a suite of containing a lot of different math games, and then mm -hmm. actually provide a different to you know ways to learn the same concept. Yeah, so it's really a great app. So just to try it, yeah. Oh, that sounds wonderful. I'd love to see you here. Keep, keep in touch with you here. I'll put my email address in here. Sinmei is my TA and she's dissertating now, studying the online discussion forms in this class. So um, so Cheryl um, is, a, as There's I said, an, I, an IST alum and wow. done doing great things. And as, a, as I said, was a guest. I can send you the link to watch her as a guest no, last semester. Okay. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> yeah, so many illustrious people have come through here. It's been amazing. They come to to talk. So IST was ranked in the top twenty five program uh, departments for productivity at IU today. Oh, so, fantastic! Yeah, the provost had a slide of the top twenty five departments at IU, and IST was in there. So that's kind of cool. Along with brain science, yeah. chemistry, yeah. You know, school of public health. Um, yeah, yeah that's pretty yeah. cool. And we're not a big department, but we're growing because learning science has joined us. Oh, and adult that's ed. Fascinating. That's great. Yeah. Well, learning that's science nice came to be to, cohesive. Yeah, they came to EdPsych and kicked me out of there. Now they came back to the department where they kicked me out to. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I should probably stop the recording before I say too much. So I'm going to stop the recording so we can really talk about a little yeah. gossip here that, you know, <laughs> hang on. It's still recording. It's still recording. It's okay. 
So I want to thank, this is part one, week nine, R622. We're going to take a couple break, a couple minute break, and no class next week. No synchronous. I'm at ACT next week. Just remember, don't show up at seven oh, o'clock. Yeah. Congratulations.